Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for making the time and everything. The place looks amazing on here. Yeah, you didn't see any of it. You guys just came in and set up. I uh, to show you like my... we got a rough view and cool. like we've seen the content online. It looks right. good. Cool. I'm yeah. happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So like, yeah. I mean, move into the mic. Okay, okay. Yeah. So how are you? I am good. Yeah, I was life treating you nowadays. It's rough. Yeah. Has everybody had like a really rough January, February? It's yeah. been super busy. Yes. Usually these months are like quiet. Yes. But these months have like beaten me to a pulp. And so, yeah, I'm a little tired. I'm also older than you guys. Yeah. I'm like 36. So, okay. So I'm a little tired, but alhamdulillah, I'm good. I mean, like we are getting tired, so I don't know about you guys. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? Us old people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, yeah. We're good. So like, uh, how did all of this started? Like, how did you start this studio? Like... Uh, how it how it began so the studio itself the space i yeah. started it in 2020 when okay. it's the pandemic it's we used to work here at recoded so i used to be the senior creative and design lead yeah. and i also had my own studio that i would run and for some reason i would pass by this this makan yani yeah and it used to be empty and then it turned into a salon. And mm-hmm. for some reason, I had this like desire to turn it into a studio. So one day the salon shut down. Obviously, the pandemic, a lot of things shut down. Yeah. So you were like, yes. Well, I, <laughs> I had the idea. I was like, oh, it'd be, it'd be, it would be cool. But like, I, I wasn't brave enough to like think that big. Mm. You know, it's like, who am I to like open up a studio? Yeah. Yani? And so I spoke to a friend of mine, Muhammad, and he was like, go for it. Like, why not? And I was like, you could just do that. He's like, yeah, you just. You just go, you rent, you you know. And yeah. I didn't really think about like all the responsibility that came after, but we opened it up in 2020 and now it's 2023. And it took me 10 months to bring in all the essentials. Like like every month I would buy like a desk, a chair, a thing. Yeah, like yeah. I didn't have the capital really to like start something, but it 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 came out as a studio and I think growing up in New York and seeing how like studios and creative spaces are so important especially to like youth and how we think and feel about like you know creativity and culture i thought it'd be cool it doesn't really have this or it's like an agency but it's like yeah three guys doing an agency you don't know where they work they probably work in like sketchy <laughs> stuff <know>? <laughs> yeah so i thought eh, you know, why not a studio and i i did it shui shui with a lot of help from friends people family yeah you talked about like not uh, not being like we aren't taught to be like to dream this big like uh, i think it's uh, integrated into our like uh, parents methodology that uh, we should just raise them to do like the convenient stuff like mm. just get a degree mm. um, have something i mean like it makes sense for parents to like try to ensure their children's life but like very small percentage of parents would like actually encourage their kids to do to go for the extra mile to start something on their own because like it is dangerous like you could uh, put a lot of money into something and a lot of work and it wouldn't work out where mm-hmm. like if you go the conventional route yeah. with the study job and nine to five yeah. that would be like more assured but uh, yeah I think it's within how we are raised up that we are like we weren't taught to take these big steps right here in 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 like iraq and kurdistan and the middle east in general yeah yeah but um i feel like i, I grew up in new york and like you're taught to yeah that's the thing to yeah, think yeah. Bi- yeah, yeah yeah you're taught to like yeah 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 go for it yeah go for it but then yani also on the other side of that is extreme failure and i failed a lot in my life and yeah and that's also and it important hurts. yeah, yeah it's so hurt, like, but it's important i don't think our parents and sometimes to like it ham- it to see you like daftarain in the garbage <laughs> you know and like get out of here you know daftarain you and so there's this kind of like the risk factor here is yeah. not is not as acceptable. The end of I feel like there's a lot of risk. You know, Marco, Marco, like credit system. Yeah. Yani, it's it's all it's a cash economy. Once you 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 fail here, it's like shame and your reputation and 
what are people going to think of you? There's a lot more at stake here. Yeah. Um, but I think, no, not I think, I think your generation, I'm, I'm pretty sure of it. Like, you guys, you guys really don't give a fuck. Like, are we allowed to come I mean, to this thing? No, you guys started the revolution. You guys come up with, like, really cool ideas. You guys will start things and have them die. It doesn't matter. Like, I love that energy, you know? Yeah, because, like, we, like, the way that this generation come up, like, we are the making up generation. We have to, like, fix what has been broken for the, like, last two decades. Absolutely. Decades. And, like, I think a lot of it comes to, the like, uh, as a result of the internet and like how we have been so open to a new ways of thinking mm. and like new ideas and ways of life that you can see like even uh, even in colleges or schools nowadays like it's it's not the way that it has been for like just say like the last 10 years or the mm. last 20 years i think the internet has affected a lot like and it's not only here because like you can see it everywhere like you can see the whole world has been maybe molded into something that's integrated to each other i don't know it's like a bit weird because like everyone is connected to everyone mm -hmm. yeah which also like had its like uh, bad side effects because like you don't feel connected anywhere it is a weird way to be like yeah you are connected on a on a global level but then yeah. also like on a on a local level you kind of feel very disconnected exactly yeah but it makes you do bigger things you know yeah it's weird phenomenon, but I feel like Yanni, your generation still has a lot to like do in any. I mean, we have to, Yanni. Uh, we have everything now. I mean, like not everything, but like. I mean, you still, yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, I can go on a rant, but like, no. I, I wish there were better jobs for your youth. I wish there were better like things to study. I wish there was a better education system that you could like actually do what you want to do instead of like these like engineering doctor like, yeah, okay we need those people but we also need creatives we need psychi yeah, these psych yeah. psychologists psychiatrists that yeah. are khair, like um we need job opportunities that pay well yeah like i talked about this like with the previous guest we talked about like how important it is to understand one psychology because like we can understand and learn math and chemistry but like what could are all of these things if you don't know how to deal with yourself how to live with yourself like mental that. health is number one absolutely like yeah. imagine our parents what they went through what's absorbed down to us and i think for these creative industries if you don't have a good handle on your mental health you're and gonna it's, break down huh you break down you can't deliver on time you don't know why somebody gave you a criticism or critique and you're like spiraling or like you know you can't make it out of bed one day all of a sudden your depression hits I and mean, it's it's a lot of things you need to like unravel in here it's it's very hard to get that kind of like support yeah and like the weird thing like sometimes it just like it's like this happened to me recently where like you start uh, not enjoying the things that you used to enjoy Mm. And then, like, uh, it's uh, all, like, it's a downward spiral. Like, it's it's not being able to do anything. But, like, what can you do? Like, you have to, like, fix yourself up, fix it up, and just move on. No. Fuck no. No. Zen, what, what's the solution, then? I don't think there's a salute. There's one solution, but you have to listen to your body. You have to understand, like, why, why are you stopping? Yeah. What is the problem? And this is the hardest part to like listen to yourself. Yeah. You know, is it because you don't feel seen? You don't feel heard? Is it because you're burned out? You're doing something you don't like to do. I was 30 years old when I decided to change my career. Yeah. And I was working. So I, I went to Columbia University. So I, went, I studied at Barnard College. I did Middle Eastern studies. And after that, I came out into like the NGO world in New York City. I worked for like different NGOs. I came to Edville. I worked for Sabas. And... You know, like there's just some days you get up, not some days, it started to be more and more days. I get up and I, I don't have a reason why I'm doing this. Like, I don't have a reason to get up during my day. Like, you know, all of my body wanted to stay in bed, but I would like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. you have to do this. You know? And it became more and more painful to like do it. Yeah. And you just, you don't want to do it. It's almost like you're a child, you know, when the child's like three years old and he starts to like do the tantrum, yeah, yeah. like inside your body's like, eh, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And your brain's like, Khalas, we have to, we have to go, we have to work, we have to. Win. In that moment, I reached my like max limit and I was like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. This is, my brain was like, what do you want to do? And it was like, I want to go back to art because I studied art in high school. And I was always interested in graphic design, but I never like studied it. 
and so I I decided to like do graphic design. Yeah. And the graphic design journey was a thousand times harder than my job of like getting up and going to do whatever. So like you first finished college at like what major? Like So it was Middle Eastern studies. I was supposed to be an engineer. Yeah, supposed to. I was supposed to be an engineer. Yeah. Um I uh, I always say this all the time just because you got like good in math and science and physics and Is I really loved engineering. Yeah. But uh <sighs> it's not your calling, huh? I got into engineering school. I got a scholarship. It didn't work out. So I ended up going to Barnard College at Columbia. And I just really loved Middle Eastern studies. And I just decided, like, fuck engineering. So so like you left the Middle East to study Middle East in Columbia? <laughs> well, that's what my dad <laughs> that's like, what almost yeah. lost his fucking mind. He was like, I mean, it's a bit ironic, isn't he was it? Like, Jidiyat. <laughs> He's like, He's like, why are you? I was like, Baba, but it's amazing. Yeah, like, yeah. It's really, and we, at Columbia, we had like the best instructors, the best, in, like world class. And it was really like, it was really where we would, I will never regret it. Because I also, like in, in the States, you can like choose majors and drop them. Yeah. So, I got to like it's not like you guys here no no like also you, like for for like it's not for most universities but like the ones that i am from like the ois oh uh, the American, can, yeah, yeah the American, you can do that yeah Yeah, we can change oh. managers we can take electives it, yeah we it, can take minor like it drives parents like arab parents crazy yeah, because I mean, i'll be like one week i was doing architecture and like i bought all the stuff and yeah. then i was like fuck this shit. i don't want to do architecture like i, I don't what what is wrong with these people and then the next yeah, day what's, what's wrong with these people I mean, it was it was too like exact for me, yeah. you know. Like they had a whole like alphabet you have to like, yeah, you yeah. know, font that you have like to like. Like it's a strict system. It's so strict, and like uh, I wanted to do medicine, but I like I wasn't really feeling biology, and like math started to get really hard, and also I was really depressed at that time. So when I came upon Middle Eastern studies, I was like, this is incredible! Like you get to study the history, the economy, the linguistics, books, texts, and it's so funny how that what I studied and I thought I'm going to go into the NGO world okay like uh, you know yeah. or I was going to like work for Save like Al, Al, Al Jazeera yeah. yeah yeah that bullshit yeah. Um, when I did graphic design and I was like I really love graphic design for a moment there I felt like okay so why did I, I, I found my calling huh? yeah no I definitely like graphic design even though it's fucking hard yeah um, I was like so oh, what did I do did I waste my time with Middle Eastern studies and then a few years ago, we realized what we do at the studio. We don't just do graphic design. We create identities and strategy for like cultural hybrid. Yeah. And to understand culture like we do, I have a whole degree in like things that are not cliche. It's not like when we we created Baru Brew, the coffee brand yeah, yeah. Um, in California. And it, there were no camels used, you know, like. Badu brew. Yeah. You would think there's like yeah, camels, camels and everywhere. sand, yeah. and yeah. but we were able to like dig deeper and understand the real idea of like what is the concept of Badu? How can we make it um, find this kind of like nexus point of where like American California like relaxed Bohemian culture comes in with like Badu culture? It was a really yeah. cool mix, and it was type led. And so like I realized that my Middle Eastern studies degree now really really helps me when I do design when we design for the Middle East. And we're designing for like cultures when they mix, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm really happy. I changed my major a thousand times. I yeah. also minored in anthropology. I really like I really like studying like people and culture and identity. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah, and like uh, like you can see the like it's can you can this? Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> this is like where we have it here. Uh, you can see that it's kind of you can use like all of the things that you have learned all, like throughout the whole way mm. into what you are doing currently like the studies the anthropology uh, everything can like lead you to this to this final point also math and physics yeah so in design there's a lot of like thinking about ratios yeah. and thinking about you know yeah, like the golden ratio and everything. The like, golden ratio, let's say, when we use it, or like proportions. Yeah, or I'm, like t- I'm taking we... like an art analysis class, so I'm, like, oh, I'm really? getting into that, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like we spend the entire hour just talking about paintings. It's the best. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, art history is, is 
is really cool when you start to like learn but here the problem is it's very eurocentric yeah so like all of the artists that you'll learn about are very like from europe and or like america or whatever but there's a whole history that we have in the middle east here that's not really documented not really spoken about there is going to be this really cool course given by the arab british center in yeah. london it's online it's like iraqi art really yeah that's pretty cool because My you have to, to check that out. yeah you have to like you have to know and understand why and how we create art here. Yeah. You know, one is not better than the other. You can admire, like, let's say, Renaissance painting and everything, but you can also really understand why and how art was created here. And that fascinates me. You know, it's not it's not just haphazard. You know, people thought about it. They did it for a reason. Like, what was it communal? Like, our whole, like, history of calligraphy here and and how we don't use images because of like our Islamic background and but then and there's there's so much complexity here and I feel like sometimes when they talk about Iraq they just lump it all together yeah but when you break it down each city and each like ethnicity has adat taqalid and, and things that are so beautifully layered there's so much here yeah you know it's not it's not Iraq is not like just one 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 block homogeneous huh? yeah, 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 yeah. yeah country yeah it's not it's definitely not homogeneous <laughs> no and it's yeah. it's really sad when people come to me and they're like we want to make a brand yeah and we want it to like showcase all of iraq and like we want the lamasu and i was like oh, yeah, Annie, please just stop using the fucking like we're done with the we get it babylon, yeah, babylon yeah. wallah we get it yeah. Yeah. Bustani, can we this is like a thousand years old yeah it's, it's millennia more but like can we think about like what do we want to look like in the future what are how do we take these things that are a part of us like and move them into like brands and identities that work for the future and yeah. also doesn't have a very good like international identity you know like yeah. we need a lot to work on our like how we are represented Yeah, and like I talk about this a lot. I mean, like we, like there is already a a consumer basis. Like there are already people who consume a lot of media, art, like music. Mm. And like what we are producing isn't covering like how much everyone's consuming. Like it's mostly coming from like the US or outside here. Mm. Even though that we have like, uh, we have great stories so far. Like just, you can just think about like how many movies and TV shows like, the uh, uh, Britain did about like first and second war or the US did or Hollywood mm. uh, like everyone is trying to send out their message mm. and like uh, convey it to the world uh, but like our messages are just being sent not on our behalf like uh, HBO is doing something about us exactly so like, do you know uh, how much Iraq comes up in like movies that I watch random TV shows they're also yeah. like, he came back from Iraq yeah, yeah. you know it's always, always come back from the land of war yeah Yanni We're not the land of war. What the fuck? Like, I'm sorry. There's so much more to us. We've been around. We've been around for millennia. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah. Like, um, there's so much of our history that we don't get to say. Yeah. That it's being exported on our behalf. Exactly. Yeah. And it's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. But like, we also need to reassess. Like, what do we want to export to the world? Because when you look around, creatives, everybody's just you know, Michal, if just send this out. Don't do this thing. And nobody's sitting and thinking long term yeah. you know like south korea had a long-term vision after the korean war they had a 50 to 100 year japan had a 50 to 100 year like strategy yeah and parasite won the oscars a couple of years ago so. but also like south korea is killing it in in terms of like it sold its culture yeah any to the world now when you say something is south korean product or like, yeah, like squid game parasite uh, they have movies tv shows like everything k-pop yeah exactly like and it wasn't it wasn't random it wasn't random if you go look at korea's history they strategized this back decades ago mm-hmm. you know oh, now what do we have we don't even know what we're doing next year that's the sad part yeah i think like the most that we can plan to on national uh, radio watcher like that's yeah yeah and like, it's almost like embedded in our culture you know? yeah, and about people, Shinra, yeah. yeah people get mad at me when i'm like okay how about next week like when you were planning you guys yeah. i was really impressed yeah you contacted me like three months ago or two months ago yeah but we have a podcast we like to do reserve you for february i was like i mean i had the uh, like if i'm still alive <laughs> if i'm still alive yeah, yeah. why not like yeah. nobody nobody plans like this people call 
I have a brand. I need it done next week. How do we no brands take it doesn't work like this. Three, huh? four months. Yeah, yeah. You have to call me six months in advance, you yeah. know? And it doesn't work like this here. You know? Yeah. And it's really shinu rahat gata bacha. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and and it's either like Mazgoof, Dolma. Dolma. Yeah, yeah, the first video <laughs> on your YouTube channel is about Dolma. Why is that? <laughs> oh my god, this is terrible way to talk about yeah. my So I really wanted to start a YouTube channel yeah. for this kind of like essence. I was really wanting to put out their content. Content on Iraq or yeah. like on the Sharq Al-Awsat in general. I feel yeah. like growing up in New York, the only way you hear about like Arabs of the Middle East is through... Shawarma. Through, no, yeah, I am. Very like, yeah, <laughs> Lebanese culture, but like, yeah. it's also through like movies and and so we're like terrorists or whatever. And then after 9-11, I, I lived through that. It was all these like comedians and they were always talking about terrorism. I was so over it. I was like, it's not funny anymore. Yeah. You know, so I was like, why don't we do... Why don't I do a YouTube channel and I can like showcase through my eyes what I see, which is really fucking cool. Yeah. Like people here are really funny. They love life. They love family. They love food. They love food. Yeah. But they're also like, Yani, you, you you never get bored hanging out with Iraqis. Yeah. You know, even the Lebanese are excited. Like the Lebanese yeah. are excited to hang out with Iraqis. Yeah. Yeah. So they're like, oh, you guys are like fun people. Which is a big compliment. The Lebanese, they also are like us. They live through war. They yeah. love they love life. They yeah. like to have fun. And so I was like, why doesn't the world know about this? And so I started off with Dolman. You know, I, I'm fascinated by Dolman. Yeah. Dolma is like a labor of love. Yeah, it's it's a mixture of love and <coughs> art. Like you when when you see like how the meat is put down down like on the pot and then you would like put in uh, the grape leaves and then you would put the onions and but, the vegetables. But it it's also like not a single person. Yeah, you don't yeah, make yeah, it for one, yeah. you, you do it to like limb. Yeah, yeah, limb. And yeah. you in Sanasini and yeah, everybody's yeah, in there eating yeah. and I find it like incredible and also like the man of the house yeah, who flips yeah. the pot. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I love that and then slowly as I was going through my graphic design journey, I was like, well, yeah, okay, there's Dolma, there's Muskuf, but also I want to show creatives here. And like what creativity is. And so I really didn't have an idea for my platform yeah. Um, at the beginning. But then as I went along, I was like, I really want to showcase design here or like creatives here. But I never got to like fully commit to YouTube because you know, to edit a fucking video is like yeah. eight hours. To shoot it is like four. You have to plan it and have a script. And I was like, this is... Yeah. This, this is a this lot is so of time. encouraging. Yeah, this is so encouraging. And like all of my video, all of my videos are terrible. I encourage everyone to go and like and watch them all. Leave really shitty comments. No, no, and, watch, yeah, go watch them all. Please don't. It's a waste of your time. Yeah. So that that was that the was Dolma, why it huh? started with Dolma. Yeah. yeah. And then like TEDx happened. Oh yeah, I forgot yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah. like, how did that happen? Like. Uh, had someone reach out to me and was like, Khadija, we really want you to speak at TEDx. Yeah. And this was not, like was before graphic design, design or like? At, a, uh, during my graphic design journey. Yeah, but yeah. it was for like a medical conference. Yeah. So yeah. it was really awkward because yeah. like, it was all like doctor yeah. and whatever and doctor had and then the, I, I came on stage and like nobody gave a fuck. <laughs> and I was like, graphic design is yeah. amazing. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. like, yeah, nobody cares. And I remember like they, I was losing my voice. So I, I presented about like the power of graphic design, which I'm like, I would do it again, so different, but I would still say the same thing, yeah. like how important design is in our country. And then Rudow had an interview with me like later that night and I was losing my voice. And like the, the, the interviewer thought he was like, he was being an asshole. Yeah. So he's like, I don't understand why, what does design what have design, to, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, you think about hospitals when you walk into a hospital, yeah. okay? And especially when you build a hospital in a place where people speak three, four languages, okay? How do you indicate to somebody where to go? And on it, our, our culture is a lot of like, you know, can you help me? I don't know where yeah, to go. Yeah, why not a washer? Or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You also like, you know, you're not going to be a woman alone. There's no single woman culture here. It's not going to, you're going to na navigate something by yourself. You, you always are going with a man or a family or a dad or something. And so they will navigate for you. And yeah. usually it's like, Sorry, when you design, you give back people their power. So you have, you come in, and I don't know if you've ever been to media in Erbil. It's, I think no. it's one of the best designed hospitals here. They have signs. You know it's where a to private go. hospital, right? Yeah, it's a of private hospital. Yeah. yeah, but there are a lot of shitty private hospitals here. Really? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, nobody's really investing in how to direct people where to go. Yeah. 
you know, they have like little colored lines for like, you know, if you're going to do your like blood, ex- blood, uh, whatever. And so I told him design is very important in helping people understand how to navigate, how to process information. Design is not about making things look pretty. Yeah. Design is about making things communicate something to you, you know, like Erbil Airport, Baghdad Airport. Baghdad Airport, I believe, was designed by a Hadid? German. No. I don't know. Was it? Just no, no. It was like wh- whatever you look at the Hadith. No, Khatiyah is only her building. Yeah. Now in Baghdad, it's being built. Really? It, t- it took her her whole life. Yeah. I mean, I believe so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So. I mean, like you're the graphic designer. So, I mean, yeah, she's an architect. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was that was TEDx. It was not not TEDx Nishtiman, TEDx HMU, Halal yeah. Medical University. Yeah. Yes, yes, so yes. That was interesting. I also did like public speaking, like so I did Toastmasters for a long time. So yeah. I, I really like public speaking. Yes, yeah. it's nice. It's like it's a really nice challenge to put yourself through it. Yeah. Yeah. It's super vulnerable too. People yeah. always have opinions. So like when that thing came out, I think I was wearing a skirt. Yeah. And like the comments on Facebook were like terrible. And I was I was like, why are people worried about what I'm wearing? And then I realized, welcome to Iraq. Like they were yeah. they didn't care about what I was saying. It's just that the fact that I was wearing a skirt it was just mind blowing. And I was like, okay, uh-huh. cool. cool. Yeah, cool. 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 Yeah. I mean, like it's our country. This is this is our country. Yeah. yeah. Inshallah, it'll be better. I believe in you guys and your yeah. generation. So, yeah, it's like no matter how fucked up we are like i think there's a lot of promise and hope absolutely yeah absolutely i this i i don't even hesitate to like think about absolutely there's a lot of promise so like i just hope my studio stays around long enough to see you guys like do really cool things and like i hit this thing so many yeah, times it's okay. um and i really hope one day the studio is a place where all of these creatives can like come and work together and collaborate and so that we can we can realize these ideas because we need to we need a stronger ecosystem yeah you know we need a lot of creatives to be paid well and to be respected and to be given the chance to do really cool projects and to be given time and to be given effort yeah and like i think one of the reasons like we can also use role models like Mm -hmm. when people start like making it in this industry first of all it would like really help out with convincing parents to like pursue such things mm. and like it would provide so much help for people who are just starting out because like if you are starting out and like you have no one like you would really get discouraged about anything but like I was really like lucky to have like Rada, like he was planning to help out or Murtaj or like other friends mm. uh, Zaid doing the audio it's like it's a really collaborative work like where everyone's doing something that they enjoy mm-hmm. and like it all would like come out in this like really nice like i remember the first time uh, because like the first season that we did it was audio only so like mm. we were recording out of the microphones with these headsets mm. and then as you said like it takes months to just get like these microphones and like the shipping and uh so okay it's it's a mess it makes you want to it really sh- sifts out like the people who are dedicated yeah like like in the us maybe you can like order microphones and you get them next day with amazon prime and you start the podcast Ab- here absolutely. you have to like search for the best quality because you can't return them if some of them is broken exactly. so you have to get some good stuff with good budget because like everything would be doubled in price with yeah. shipping and everything and you have to wait and the waiting is like it's really something like takes Waiting two years. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like when when we started and we recorded everything and then like during this winter break, like from December to February this year, uh like I saw the first episode that we mm. did after all that work. And like it's it, it brought me so much joy. Yeah, I did. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. And like mostly people would like really don't like listening to themselves. Like I do too, but like I'm doing a podcast, so I have to. Yeah. Yeah. So like just watching the episode and like how fun it was recording it and watching it. It's like it's really a blessing. And uh, I'm really lucky to be like in this position. And Alhamdulillah. Yeah. And it is pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And now I'm sitting here and like talking to like all of this 
It's over. pretty cool, and you have like a setup, and you guys like. Have and a we tea. set up within, uh, we set it up in thirty minutes, so like it's. That's yeah, fast. that's a, yeah. that's impressive. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah. I wouldn't know anything about shit. I think we were recording like this is a funny story. We were we were planning to record like an episode from last season, mm. and like the guest, he didn't confirm with us. Okay. So like we were planned to like shoot, let's say for today, and like yesterday I sent out like a confirmation email, but like he didn't reply. So I waited and like I woke up in the morning the next day. I said like, okay, he didn't reply. So let me go back to sleep. And like an hour later, an unknown phone number rings on me. So like I answer it. Oh, so, uh, I'm coming. Like, let's shoot out. So like I had to replan everything. We had to reset up everything. Like there were. That's what I, I hate about this, Yanni. Yanni, sorry to cut you. Yanni, sorry, yeah, yeah, continue. Course, Yanni, that's what I hate. Sometimes people don't assume or don't understand how much work it goes into like set up something like this. Yeah. And it's very kind of you to like accommodate. And when people don't confirm and they're like, oh, okay, like let's have a meeting now. I'm like, no, no, yeah. like absolutely not. It just- Because like I'm not coming prepared for this in every shape or form. Like it would benefit you and it wouldn't benefit me as well. So like yeah. why are we doing it? It's just a waste of time. So much preparation is yeah. needed and like people don't really think about the preparation. It's 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 always this like yalla yalla, yalla yalla culture. Yalla yalla in the barha. Yalla yalla so yeah. Yalla mashi ha mashi And like this is this is the result. You get shitty, shitty things. Yeah. There's nothing that I and there's very few things in Iraq that I'm like really, really proud of to like be like this is something really well made, well done well put together, well thought out. You yeah. know, I just feel like people are still in like survival mode. Yeah, I still like need a lot of help with the design for like the podcast. So like uh, we can talk about it like later, like if- Why not? Okay. But like, can I say no to you here? <laughs> I mean, like that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> Came all the way here. <laughs> you will do my design. No, no, like just like few tips. Absolutely. Okay. I'll ask you, this okay. is how thank we help you, each other. You, thank you, thank you. So, uh you went from here to columbia university then like i've seen vlogs at amman and i've seen vlogs in london so, so i was born and raised in new york yeah born yeah, and raised yeah 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 so i came here to Erbil 10 years ago oh really mm. so like you weren't brought up here and then moved here no 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 okay and like how was that for like an iraqi person to live in new york <laughs> i mean so Baba Iraqi and Mama Tunisia. Yeah. So I'm a mixed, I'm a mixed baby. Yeah. Um, growing up in New York City, we were very poor. Uh, I went to public school. I was a good student. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really realize that I was Arab until I was older. So she was so New York is so mixed. One well, like the identity crisis hits. The identity crisis definitely hit me like 16, 17 when I went to high school. Yeah. And a lot of my art, because I went to an art high school, I went to LaGuardia, I majored in art. Um, and so I did a lot of art around my identity. So yeah. we'd, we'd go to Tunis like almost every year. And I knew that I had my life in Tunis and I knew I had my life in New York and they were very different. Like they smelled different, they moved different. Like there's like this, there's something about third world countries. Like, it yeah. smells like yeah, diesel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you, you know. Like, you can sense it in there. If you have seen The Matrix when he talks about, like, how. Uh, have you seen The Matrix? No, no, I okay, haven't. Okay, like, there is this scene where, like, Agent Smith, like, talks about, like, how dirty humans are, and, like, how the sweat is, like, so contaminating. And so, like, <laughs> that's why he wants to wipe everyone out. Damn. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, no, I don't want to wipe everyone out, but like New York, New York was very rough, tough, subway, school, poverty, studying. Mm. Uh, my parents did the best that they could. And then we go to Tunis. For holidays and stuff? And to see my family. Yeah. To see my, we couldn't come to Iraq. Yeah. You know, at that time we couldn't. But... It just smelled different. It was it smelled like oranges. It's more trees. I can just like, speak. A bit yeah, sorry. The mark, yeah. yeah, it's more trees. It's more it's family. You know, we didn't yeah. have really family in New York. Like, I think I had my uncle. Yeah, and and it was very very limited. But we came to Baghdad in 1997 for our first and last time as a family. And I remember, 
I was 11 years old and I remember Rahna Baba Sharji, something like that. I can't yeah. remember. It's just a place where we were waiting for Baba to come back, right? And Baba Baba is a very tall man with like back then he had like this dumb mustache. Oh, yeah, you know, of like course. everyone had, yeah. Back then people yeah. still have this mustache. But I remember in New York, if yeah. I look out, I can find my Baba right away. Yeah. Right? And I Asmar, couldn't. A smart, tall, you know, I remember looking out the window and I was like, Baba, 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 Baba. Like everybody looked like Baba. I was like, oh, this is, and this is like game changing for me at 11 yeah. years old. Because like you don't feel different anymore. You don't feel different. But mm-hmm. then it's also really weird to be the same because, yeah. you you know, I had it was always made fun of my nose and like I was different. I looked different. But then you come here and you're like you see people that look like you and they talk like your parents. It's a really weird. It's a really weird phenomenon. And I think the whole like, you know, the Gorba experience when people in East Africa, when you go, they go back and they're yeah. like, they're like oh, I miss my family. I miss home. I miss food. I have that same experience here, but I feel like here there's more rahma yeah. than there is in New York. Like New York, you, know, you miss something, it's gone it's forever, like done. You don't have a paper, you have to wait, you know. There's no there's no if, and, or but. Like you come prepared or here it's like, uh, you don't have the paper? Yeah, let it yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. fine. And, 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 you know, I realized here as a girl, like if something happens, if you cry, a lot of things open up for you. Yeah, which does not happen in New York. They don't give a fuck if you're like girl, boy, alien. You no. know, here it's like if you cry, which I don't do because I yeah. never like. Yeah, I mean, like uh, I'm wondering how did you come to this information? Well, I got into it. I, I got into a, <laughs> I got into a car crash. Yeah, <laughs> crashed. Sorry, I crashed into another car. This is many years. Did ago. Did someone die? No, no, no. Alhamdulillah, it was just like a bumper thing. But okay, like the guy okay. came in in front of me. You know, hear how like the left lane it goes really fast. And I still wasn't like used to like the thing. So the guy came and then he was like really slow and I was going really fast. So I yeah. Get the fuck out of my way. So I, I bumped into him. So I got out and I, and I, I was like very in New York. I, get yeah. out, I was like, what the fuck? And I went the, got, give the fuck fuck. Yeah. And the guy was like, he came out smiling at the first. Yeah. And then he like turned around. And he's like, what's wrong with this? Because I was like very aggressive. I was like, what do you, what do you, you can't like move up. You can't. And he's like, no, 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 no. no. He's like, it's your fault. And And I remember just being like super aggressive, you know, yeah. like I was very like masculine energy yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of thing, right? Yeah. So then the police, the old police guy comes because I was like, I'm not moving my car. Yeah. I'm not, uh, uh. yeah. The policeman comes over to me. And he's like, how did we just, just cry with Mashiha? And yeah. they'll go away. And I was like, no, I'm not doing that. I mean, I did it. And then it stayed or whatever. It stayed like head to head, whatever. Then I started crying and I was like, okay, yalla, it's yalla, fine. Yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. So it's not fun. a big deal. Yeah. I was like, the fuck? You can do that? I was like, this is not good. Yeah, yeah. This is not good. Yeah. But I was like so overwhelmed because I didn't, I didn't know what to do. I was like, what do you do here? Like, I mean, to everyone that you was listening to this, <clears> like, <throat> this is great to traffic issues. Like, just come here, just, just enjoy it here. No, I mean, it's <laughs> terrible. Can't get a bailout ticket. Ever. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. It was the guy was like, where, where? I mean, you don't think that it's your fault and i was like i mean i don't understand i was like where's the police officer and i realized here there's no like system where they call the insurance unit it's really like you kind of figure it out everybody yells at each other you bring in your men yeah from your family they kind of like figure yeah, it out yeah. and then like a mablar is like yeah, agreed yeah. upon and then everybody like goes home yeah so though i just cried <laughs> <laughs> I'm not proud. I'm not proud of that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so in New York, then what? In New York, and then I got married. Yeah. Um, I got married, and I got married in 2008, and we lived in New York for like a few years, okay. and then I came here with my husband. Okay. Yeah. Arbil. Arbil. Yeah. 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 And like you stayed here for till now. Yeah, so I came in 2012. Um, Erbil did not look like this in 2012. Really? Yeah. No, this is this is Las Vegas now. Yeah, I mean like before it, before it was like you, you know it's Atagshi was like you go to Cheche and, and like we have all trade center just in front of us. Right in front of like it, it has like I, the did, best did, mall. Did, did they like rebuild this? Like this is new. Yeah. All of this is new. All of these buildings. And I remember when Naznaz the Zakaria buildings were like the only buildings that you had around here. Now it's really like changed and developed i mean i mean except for isis isis really fucked us over yeah because we were it was really getting strong and then 2015 14 15 it just like somebody knocked out the legs yeah yeah it seems like we like we advance one step in front and then we go back 10 behind like it's it's a tango it's yeah. a tango and inshallah but 
I feel like Iraq will. I feel like Iraq is stabilizing, especially with like the world, uh, the, not uh, the world cup, the Gulf Cup in Basra. Do you want to hear like what happened? Because like I am from Basra, so like I witness it firsthand. Shut up! Are you really from yeah, Basra? Yeah, I'm from Basra. So wait, my grandma's from Basra. Yeah. What, we, I have to check then families. Okay? Yeah, yeah, okay. Because well, maybe our uh, relatives are stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone is relative here because like everyone. <laughs> yeah, tell me what happened in Basra. Yeah. So like. Until a few days before the tournament started. So this is like, uh, for everyone who's listening, this is like the Arabian Gulf tournament. Mm-hmm. It's a friendly one. So it's like not officially licensed by the FIFA. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, it's a really popular tournament, especially for the Gulf countries. Right. Arabian Gulf countries. Right, Not right. like the other side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like, even before, a couple of days before the tournament starts, like me, my dad and everyone, like, Will this really happen in Basra? Will Louis like really have? Because I think they canceled it a bunch of times before, yeah. right? Yeah. Like it, it gets canceled, it gets approved, it gets canceled, it gets yeah. approved. And like uh, many people were sell out of this, like the governor and like everyone, like they are in extra. Because like just arranging a podcast episode mm. is a lot of work. Yeah. So like managing a whole eight countries. That's crazy. And like you have some very lovely neighbors. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you have to manage like the very uh, friendly uh, political figure that you have in the country. It's a mess. Yeah. So like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine like what uh, they went through. And just, right? And Were just, you also thinking about like the poor program man, like the project manager of this? Like he probably has no more head yeah, yeah. on his, yeah. uh, no more hair on his head. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah, so, okay, it's going to happen. Like the ticket system opened and we went, we, there's like an online queue. Mm. So like we waited for three hours and we are in, uh, me, Ayub and like his friend, mm. we booked all tickets. So like it was a mid-range se- section. It wasn't like the most fancy okay. like It wasn't uh, fully back there. So uh, game days happened though. Ayub lives in Baghdad. So okay. like he came here, he came to down to Basra. Like we had the best day I had in Basra for a while. Yeah. And it was Thursday. We have, uh, do you know Shatl Arab? Yeah. It's, it's really close to my home. So yeah. like uh, it was kind of a festival place. Mm. Yeah. A lot of uh, people from like Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, Saudi. That was the best part, yeah. having and all these like Zawar. Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, I was walking there, it's like, oh my God, this is like what people in the Emirates always feel like. It's always people from other countries just visiting you. Because hey, like, so I've, the... I've never seen people outside my country. Like maybe I would meet a couple of Chinese people working in oil fields somewhere, <laughs> just buying stuff in their yeah, markets. We know, we know that the, the, the workers that are like, like yeah. Many, but, yeah. like, but like people coming to like visit yeah like crazy. From, from, from Emirates and from Kuwait and yeah. from it was like it was the craziest shit and like you would see their cars like their cars would look fucking amazing mm. like it's they are so different for, uh, like they had they do something mm. I don't know what it is they they look like even old cars they look yeah, shiny yeah, as yeah, fuck yeah, they yeah. look amazing so they are uh, in Shat al-Arab and it's real close to home and like you see all of these different accents like am I actually in Basra am I in Iraq Cause like I lived in the city for all for over twenty years. Yeah. It wasn't like this. Yeah, like it yeah, was yeah. so bad, like shitty bad. Yeah, yeah, 2007, yeah. 2010, 2012. Then it improved from 2015 till now. Like I always talk about this. Like we didn't have a, a theater or a cinema mm. until 2018. Yeah, yeah, and I love movies. I don't know if you can tell. So, <laughs> yeah. So, like, seeing all these people and, like, we have fun on Thursday. Friday is the first match. It's, like, Iraq versus Oman, which is also the game on the final. So, it's also Iraq versus Oman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we go there. Uh, we get in, like, after a very little, little huge lo- uh, queue and, like, a line. And mm. we are in the field. We go to our section, which is, like, written on the ticket. Mm. The section is filled out. And this oh. is like three, four hours before the game. And it got worse. So like we were standing on the stairs in the studio and like I'm looking, like the studio uh, holds up to 65,000 people. Oh my God, is this the same that happened at the end game? Like the overflow? Yeah, Shit. yeah. So like I am in the studio 
I look around like in matter of minutes from like I'm entering into our section, which was already filled out. So like currently we're we're standing on the stairs. Mm. I look out and all the seats are filled out. And this is like 3, 4 p.m. And the game starts at 7. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, okay, we can like sit on the stairs. That's okay. Like even though that like we paid money for this, but like, okay, I... I can take this for a country who didn't have like a football tournament for 40 years. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, it's all good. So then like more people started coming into the stairs. Oh my God. Yeah, so it started getting like crowder and crowder until like the stairs like can hold two people. So like two people were standing on the stairs because like if you sit down, you can't see shit. So we're standing <laughs> and there is like a person like, you know, there is this uh, declining thing on the stairwell. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and there is like people also like sitting here. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. Yeah. So uh, we stood there We from four till seven. The game starts and like we finish the first half. Wait, you, you just stood there? Yeah, for yeah, four you, hours. You paid, for you paid for seats and you stood there. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, you didn't die. Yeah, and like the, it <laughs> got worse. Like it's uh, so like thank God. Like I've saw some scenes of like harassment and like uh, families getting uh, like it wasn't the best thing that you can see. <sighs> so, it's so embarrassing also when you have like people coming from outside to like yeah. see you and you haven't seen people. But like, can you like we can't really complain because like this is the first tournament in 40 years. Like. A lot has been worked on just making this happen, and yeah. like I think they they went on shorthand on the like planning uh, how we uh, would manage a thousand percent. Yeah, where but, you need to like spend the time. Also, I didn't hear shit about the golf like cup yeah. until like I think a few days before, and I was like, "Where's the advertising for it?" Yani Chan Mafrudiani, and uh, people were like, it, "It just got approved." Like it's actually going to happen. So like, there's nothing. And I was but really pissed. We we have, do you know how awesome? No. Yeah. So how awesome is basically like people who just like go see an empty land that they would just like build the house and like they claim it. Oh yeah, yeah. They, you guys have a lot of that. Yeah, we, ha we have a lot yeah. of that. So like, do you know what the solution was for like the Arabian Gulf tournament? They just like put uh, like huge uh, Bore Hadid. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And like they would tape it all over with like uh, the logos and uh, the designs for the Arabian uh, for the tournament and like <laughs> <laughs> just like when you when you're cleaning the dining room and like you just put, throw stuff under the rug. Yeah, it's and it's so sad too because it came after like the World Cup, where like TikTok Miliana be like how Qatar did it, and then Man, it's the like world, the World Cup it was something. The World Cup was something else. Yeah, it's the World Cup changed our lives. Yeah, I had the the well, not the pleasure. I mean, my grandma died, so I had to go to Tunis, and so I passed through Doha, Laihaha, and I got to pass over the the stadiums, and it was really incredible. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I was sad, you know, I was like crying, and then I was like, ooh, that's cool. Yeah, because it's um, it's pretty cool to see a country that's proud of who they are, proud of their customs. They're like a big fuck you to like the Western world. You know, when they're like, I not, love that. I love not, that. We're not serving beer at the I, stadium. Uh, I, I was like, I love that. I was I like, fucking, like it's not easy. Yeah, it's not like we have to accustom by your rules. You have to accustom by us. Exactly. And like, this they, is, they, they freak the fuck out. Yeah, and this is like the biggest like uh, fucking move that they can do for right? like, the Western countries. Yeah. So, yeah, it went out great. And like even the like. After the first half, like we sat down, mm. we finally got seats because like families were leaving because like this is not a place for families anymore. <clears throat> That's so sad. Yeah, so mm. we got seats and like we enjoyed the game. Then like there was a second game, we just saw a bit of that and we were like dying of hunger and standing for four hours. So like Very we left key. the stadium. And like I was pretty mad that day. Like I bought tickets and like everything. But then like I got back on social media and I saw like how a lot of people are happy about what happened like mm. inside Iraq and outside <laughs> and people who had like actual good experiences in the studio so like as I said uh, a few months ago like it's the first football tournament that we have 
and 40 years. But I feel like you go through like a range of emotions. First you're mad, then you see, then you're like, okay, I'm yeah. happy. Then yeah. you're like, you go you go through like the seven stages you're of joking. like, yeah, yeah, stage yeah. you're like, huh, and then you kind of accept yeah. it. Because I feel like that's, that's what happens here, you know? You, yeah. You get mad, something is not the way that you think could have been done. Because I, I expect a lot more from it. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, we're smart enough, we're good enough, we're logical enough, and I feel like the, the corruption sometimes just takes over, like, yeah, but like it's it's all steps on the right direction. Trust me. Like even I trust you. Yeah. On, uh, even though through all the shortcomings of the, and it turned out great. We won the tournament. It we was, did. It was like it was such a devastating game to watch. Like it's the final moments and like an equalizer and then we score and they equalize. But like it was the same yeah, at the, the World Cup. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but then the World Cup you were cheering for Argentina. You were cheering for Messi. The, the little boy from Rosario, but now you are cheering for your country, and that's that. That just hits different. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I was devastated when Morocco didn't make it. That was so sad. That was very sad. I got, like I, they I, were so I close cried. into getting their revenge from like all the imperials. I the cried so bad, even though like <laughs> and they played such a good game against France. Like they stood their ground and like they did, and they did greatly. But like they did more than anyone expected, and like yeah. there is more to come. Yeah. They are such a great team. They, like, uh, I was discussing this like in a classroom. I think once, and, like I was talking, I was talking about like how for like clubs and like uh, leagues you would play for money and you would play for a title, but in the World Cup you are playing for your country. Yeah, you're playing different. for your people you're playing for yeah. your family like it's it's everything on the line like money is just it's like a pressure. side on it yeah it's yeah. The, the pressure and like to see players actually go through this and like whether it's Argentina or like how Iraq when like when uh, they won the previous tournament like it's it's happy to to watch and yeah. to witness that and to put the they put the bisht on on Messi, Messi. wow what? <laughs> they went crazy and Messi was just so accepting. He was like, okay, like he was just happy. You know what I mean? Just like, yeah. he like, like the rest of like the rest of us were like, said no. like he, he yeah, could, yeah, no. and it, yeah. but he understood what that meant. And yeah. then the world was having a conniption. They're like, do you understand in our culture? But like, I feel like this is what people are missing. Do you understand in our culture yes. the, like how res- like what a sign of respect this is? Yeah. So like, and I, I bet I bet that he loves Qatar now. Like after all the losses that he witnessed in like Germany or Brazil or like uh, whatever, like in Qatar, I won and I wore mm. the bishit, so I'm going to for fucking wear bishit everywhere. I'm going to wear it nowadays. Do, do, do you know in Argentina how many people yeah, wear yeah, bishits? Yeah. Like bishits, bishits, bishits. Yeah, it's I great. Mean, it's Argentina cool. won, Iraq won. I don't know if you like uh, watch Barcelona, but they are also winning these days. So like I'm. I'm happy with all the. F- I've stopped. I've stopped following them, unfortunately. Okay, so like, yeah, it's it's a great uh, period of time for uh, football for fans. For football, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So it's really unfortunate that we have to kind of wrap this up. Yes. Uh, fav- uh, this is, I think, the first episode where we I don't go in depth about movies and TV shows. So, <laughs> yeah, favorite movie and favorite TV show. My favorite movie is called. Um, well, it's, it's a split. It's two movies. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. One of them is Monsoon Wedding. I haven't heard that. One of my favorite directors, Mira Nair. And the second one is um, Two Days in Paris. I haven't seen that. Well. Um, and they're both, they both revolve around culture and women and just like um, kind of like the themes that I love. They're two, they're the only two DVDs I like brought with me from New York. I have a very nice DVD collection I can show it to you. Really? Yeah, I, well. like, who still watches DVDs? Um, so wait, favorite movie and favorite TV show, TV show. Um, I'm just terribly simple. It's friends. Yeah. I mean, I like, I'm in New York and like, and I also was like, like I lived through the seasons coming out and when when we'd go to high school, we talk about what happened. So like, it is my, my favorite, like go to comfort TV comfort show. TV what show. do you think about The Office? Do you like it? I haven't really had a chance to watch it yet. Yeah, I, I love so it like, more than Friends, actually. Just, it's a bit re- more realistic. I feel like Friends is no longer really funny to like the, the newer generations. And I, I have this conversation with my with my friend all the time. Um, it's outdated. Yeah. But it's just comforting to me. Yeah. Office, I really want to watch it. Now that I have like my TV Plus, yeah. you can access whatever. 
So it's on my list of things to watch. Okay, great. Uh, it was a lovely conversation and like I had so much fun talking to you. Likewise, this yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Any things you want to promote, like I'm going to sure put all the links to the studio and like all of your work in the description and everything. Thank you. Final words. Final words. No, just do big things like dream yeah. big. Dream big and like go for it. Dream big, go for it. Don't oh, mashiha, mashiha. Mashiha, yalla. Mashiha, mashiha, yalla. Mashiha, yalla. Yeah, 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 okay. Thank Thanks you. everyone for listening. Thank you. Tune out for the next one and like have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye.